Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. A little while ago, I had another email from Alexius Wong who uh, sent a question by email. And this time he asked if I could solve um, or show how to solve this question using uh, the TN Spy CX2. Uh, the question uh, was about recursive uh, sequences or sequences that are defined recursively, which means it's defined uh, in terms of the previous one previous term or two previous terms. Both of these questions are somewhat similar in the sense that they both recursively define the first term for both the sequences the same. Uh, in the first one, we uh, we are asked to find the term of the sequence that has value 257. In the second one, we are asked to find the value of the largest term in the sequence that is less than 10,000. So in, a, in one sense, they're both the same. So I will be solving just one of the questions. The main idea that Alexius Wong asked in this question was, how do we solve a question something like this using the TNs by CX2? Let's find out. Before I answer Alexius Wong's question, I just want you all to know that there is a series of videos that I've created on sequences and series. I'm going to link those videos in the description box below. Go ahead and take a look at them. So most of this calculator syntax, you know, I might go a little fast, but you know, you can take a look at those videos. I'll go slowly and explain what each does. All right. So having said that, let's just jump to the calculator. And here's my calculator screen on the TN by CX2. If it is a normal sequence, non-recursively defined, okay, not a recursive sequence, but just a normal sequence, whether it's arithmetic sequence or even a geometric sequence, this is how you would have defined it, okay? So you would have said u of n, pretty much like a function, okay? So you could have defined it something like this, uh, as uh, just like I said, pretty much like a function that assign key. And let's say the function was 2n plus 1, all right? And when you say enter, it should say done. And then you can use, uh, you know, let's say you want to find the fifth term or the 50th term, you know, and it will just calculate the 50th term for that particular sequence. And then if the question was something like to find the term of the sequence, which is equal to 151, uh, we'd have gone to menu and come to the algebra menu and using numerical solve, we'd have said u of n is equal to, let's say, I just made that thing up 151 comma n comma n, hit enter, you'd say, okay, that's the 75th term and that's easy to verify. Okay, two times 75 is going to be 150 plus one is 151. So the 75th term is equal to 151. Now this technique works fine when it's a sequence that's defined in the normal way, the usual way, but we can't use the same technique for a sequence that is defined recursively. And I'll show you in a minute, okay? So let's say if I insert a new um, problem, and we define the sequence in the same way, okay? So I'll just use the same question that Alexis Wong sent, okay? So I'm just going to define in the same way as in a normal function. This is a functional definition, I'd like to call it, okay? So U of N is defined as a function. And if I do the same technique, you know, if I use the same technique for Alexis's question, so U of N, I'm going to define it as using the assign key, uh, you know, as a piecewise function, okay? In the same idea of a piecewise function, because then you can define it in terms of whatever pieces. So the first piece is going to be two times uh, u n minus one. So Alexis, if you're watching this video, what I did was your question had u n plus one, okay? u n plus one uh, is equal to two times u n minus one. So the term of the sequence is defined as two times the previous term minus one. Here, what I've done is that it's u n, I've entered as u n is equal to two times u n minus one. It's the same idea, okay? And uh, here I can say uh, these are for n greater than or equal to uh, one, correct? That's the first piece. The second piece, you can just say this is the value of the second piece. This is going to be equal to two where uh, n is equal to 1. Is that clear? So for n is equal to 1, uh, the sequence has value 2. And for n greater than or equal to 1, that's how it's defined, okay? 2 times the previous term, minus 1. Hit enter. All that is fine. But if I'm trying to answer that question, find the term of the sequence that is value 2, 5, 10. Notice what's going to happen, okay? So if I go through menu, algebra, and I say numerical solve, u of n is equal to 2, 5, 7, comma n. The same thing that we did earlier. Here's the error, watch. It says recursion too deep. And then you hit view, it shows me this uh, page, which is actually where you have to, it's almost like the, I don't know what it is actually, to be honest, okay. I wrote to some people and they said that it is basically the code, okay. So if you hit edit, watch what happens, okay. It goes to that, literally that code, okay. The program that is written for 
recursion. So I really could not go ahead with this technique. Okay. Although I did write to a few people to try and uh, find out how do I close this window? Let's see. Okay. Um, close it. And I come back to this uh, calculus screen. If I try the solve, okay, if I even try the solve, I come to algebra and I say solve and do the same thing. And it still gives me some kind of error, the same error if in, if in fact, okay. So uh, remember the solve key is only possible, um, is not possible in the press to test mode, just in case, okay. There you go, similar mess uh, error message. So you cannot use the solve or the end solve feature to solve a question, something like this, which you would have done when it was a sequence that is defined normally, right? Uh, for the recursor, there is a problem and this error message, I don't know what it is all about. So I'm going to give you another workaround, okay, a technique. It might seem a little longer, but then it works, okay? So here we go, Alexis. Uh, I'm going to enter a, a graph page, okay? Yeah, you heard me right, graph page. Because we can actually plot uh, uh, the sequence of terms, all right? So if you come to graph entry edit mode, and here there's a sequence. Can you see that? Number seven sequence. So I'm just going to enter a sequence and watch what happens. Here it says U1N. So I'm going to define U1N just as the question that we had here. Here it was defined as U of N. Okay, so we, we got to be careful. This is U1, which means it's the first sequence. If you were to plot uh, another sequence, that would be U2 of N. Okay, just like even the functions, F1X, F2X, defining the different functions that are being graphed on the same window. All right, so here we go. Two times U1, U1 of N minus 1. Uh, n minus one, and is it a minus one? Yeah, there we go. So that's the uh, sequence, I hit tab, come down, U initial terms, the initial term is two, and I think that's about it we need to do. And we hit enter, and you can see that, all right? You can see that the one in green is the initial term, okay? And those are the terms of the sequence, all right? Another Y window, viewing window, just let's change this slightly. You can make this negative one because the terms are not here. I can make this, let's say 100. And you can see the terms there, you can see, okay? So they are, these dots represent the different terms of the sequence. The green is the first term and the others are the different terms. Uh, very similar to the uh, scatter plot, but the difference is that in the scatter plot, you can actually, when you hover around that point, it'll give you the X value and the Y value. It's easier to read that way, okay? What is that value equal to? Uh, when you do the sequence uh, plotting, it will not give you those values. So then how do you find out the value, uh, the term of the sequence that has value 257? Well, if you were to insert the table, okay, when you get that split screen table, there, all that you have to do is that scroll down to what that value was, 257, and say, okay, n is equal to 9. Okay, the ninth term of the sequence has value 257. In the same way, Alexis, if you're watching with this video, you can scroll down to the value that is uh, 10,000, less than 10,000 it says, okay? So whatever, it's a different question, of course, in a different definition, but you can just scroll down and say, all right, it's the 14th term is the last term, the largest term that is less than 10,000. You know, you have to scroll down and use the table of values. So this is one way there's a workaround for recursive sequences that has questions where you cannot use the usual technique where a sequence is defined this way, the U of N and using the N solve or the uh, solve option, okay? So another way, another way, let me just show you since we are on the recursive sequences idea, let me just insert a, a new problem for this one, okay? So in this time, I'm going to insert a list and spreadsheet page, okay? So I'll take the second question for this one. Uh, what we can do here is that, um, I don't know, you can call this U2, U1, whatever sequence, okay? So I'm just going to call it SE, Q2, can I do that? Okay, sequence two. And then when you come to this particular cell where we enter the formula, just like in an Excel spreadsheet, here we can go and uh, go to data uh, under menu and say generate sequence, the first one. And this is a great way to have uh, all kinds of sequences. This way you can even define arithmetic sequences and geometry sequence, all the terms can be defined. But I'm just going to enter it, uh, this uh, second question that was given by Alexius. It was three times. Uh, UN minus one. So Alexis, if you're watching this, you know, here the calculator is uh, defining the sequence as UN. Your question had UN plus one. So you just have to make that slight adjustment. It is three times the previous term minus two, okay? Uh, and the initial term is still two. That's the first term. Uh, 255 is the maximum number of terms that the calculator is going to dis display, all right? Uh, with a step size of one. Ceiling value, you can provide if you want only the first 10 terms or the first 20 terms. That's like the 
ceiling value, the highest value you want to display. We are going to just go for all the 20, 255, say OK. And there you can see, you know, all the 255 terms as you scroll down. You can see that, you know, can, my God, that terms really, you know, increase very fast. So again, you know, uh, Alexis, if you're watching this, the only way to do it is you have to just, yeah, go through the values and then find out. So these are my two tips on how we can solve questions that are defined recursively, uh, sequences that are defined recursively. And we need to find the term number uh, that is equal to 257. Okay. What is the value of N when the term is equal to 257 or what is the value of N? Uh, which is just less than or the largest value of n that is less than 10,000. Okay. Uh, but we can just hope and pray that that value that is given a question is not too large because both my techniques involve scrolling down. Okay. So I hope that this uh, was useful to you, Alexius, or anyone else who's been watching this video. And if you have a better way to solve this question, you know, without having to scroll down so much or, you know, another way to solve it using the calculator app, please mention that in the comment section below. And if you have a question related to the TNSPS CX2, please do mention that in the comments or shoot me an email. I'll see you all in the next video.